Welcome to this module about simultaneous localization and mapping, SLAM for short. In this module, we'll discuss the problem formulation, which is the most complex one that we have studied in this course. It incorporates both uh, the estimation of a static parameter, the map, and the determination of the position of a dynamic object, such as the sensor in this case. We'll discuss the problem formulation and some of the properties of the problem itself, but leave for different modules to uh, deal with the implementation of this method. So there's two different other modules about BKF SLAM and FAST SLAM. So what is simultaneous localization and mapping? Well, it's a problem in two parts. It's a localization problem, uh, which concerns how to find your own position given a map. So you observe your environment and compare that to the map and give yourself a position. That's a fairly straightforward problem to solve. It can be slightly extended to navigation, which also includes uh, information about velocities and such because you want to get from point E to point B. The other part of the problem is mapping, which is also a fairly straightforward problem if you know your own pose. So if you know how you're positioned and looking yourself, and you see landmarks, you can put them in a map afterwards. The problem comes when you don't have either the pose nor the map at the beginning, so you have to do them at the same time. And that is what the SLAM problem is. The SLAM problem took off in the 80s, 90s, when it was uh, first solved by some uh, researchers sitting down in a conference, formulating the thing in a proper mathematical way. So let's visualize the SLAM problem. So uh, we have a sensor indicated by this code here, moving around in some 3D space with some global coordinate system here, observing landmarks, M's in this case. And our problem is to try to determine how this motion is, the motion is, and where the landmarks are so that we can make a map. And that is a slam problem. We need to do this simultaneously. Note that from this motion and these observations, we can make a positioning that is relative to the map that we are making. We cannot, without external information, lock this map to the global coordinate system. But that is in most cases quite fine, especially if we lock the map that we make with respect to the initial pose of the sensor. When people started to work with SLAM, uh, it usually incorporated a ground-moving robot that moved in 2D. It had a position and a heading. Uh, it was possible to measure the speed and the rotation of the robot, and uh, they made the dynamics quite simple. But then a map was made of different feature points, so points in the environment that was expected to be reseen and easily to recognize. So we put them in a, something that we call M here. And this robot carried a sensor that was either a ranging sensor, uh, such a sonar, laser, scanner, radar, something like that, that measured the distance to obstacles. And we used these obstacles as landmarks. That gave them, say, 10 to hundreds of uh, landmarks or uh, they used a camera sensor, so they used a normal camera or connect or stereo camera to get depth as well. Provides uh, detections of corners and uh, specific patterns in images that again can be reseen and considered landmarks. The difference here is that that makes up thousands or maybe tens of thousands of landmarks that need to be considered. So we need to consider the scale of the, the map here. Since then, the SLAM community has evolved and now SLAM is a com component in many different applications. So SLAM is a quite important part, for example, in autonomous driving. Now let's uh, have a more formal look at the problem uh, from which we can define the SLAM problem quite easily. So um, the SLAM is based around a model structure like this. So we have the pose of the sensor x that evolves according to some dynamic model. It is the same thing that we have seen in uh, all our estimation modules. 
and we have a map that is static, which is indicated here by no process noise on this component here. We combine the own position of the sensor and the map in what's uh, the set state. The measurements available to the system is measurements of the landmarks. And the measurement function relates the pose of the sensor with the position of the known landmarks. We can get several of these measurements during a single time step. We get several measurements. And it's not necessarily so that the first measurement in our set matches the first landmark. So we have to map out which landmark matches the measurement that we have made. This uh, indicator here, C, subindex K, I, is the landmark that matches the ith measurement at time k. And in the practice, determining this association is a really critical task. Uh, again, I want to stress that we consider the map constant, doesn't change over time. We have a number of landmarks, maybe not every of them, that are observed at a certain time and it's necessary to associate the measurements to the proper landmark, which we do with the C thing. The association of the measurements to the proper landmarks is crucial for a good solution to the problem. And this is a fairly complicated problem for laser radar measurements that only measure distance to a point, whereas it's uh, usually more straightforward using a camera where you can use the area around the point that you're interested in to get the template that you can compare. Typically, the measurements have more structure than actually pointed out in the previous slide. Uh, in almost all cases, at least the ones that we're studying in this course, uh, the measurement will be a function of the relative position of the landmark to the sensor. So the measurement is a function h of the difference between the pose and the landmark position. So we're talking about a function of the distance from me to the landmark, which could be two meters forwards and one meter to the left. And then if you have a radar, that would then be turned into a distance and a bearing. As an example of this, let's look at the most straightforward measurement that we can consider. It's the measurement of the relative position uh, from the sensor to the landmark with known headings. So it's only the Cartesian difference in position. If we formulate this as a measurement model, we can then stack all the measurements and we see that in all of them we will have an uh, identity matrix to indicate that we're going to use the own sensor position and then we remove the position of the proper landmark. And which of these positions here that's extracted, which is minus uh, identity here, depends on the association between the landmarks and the measurements. And uh, so this one would be for the first, it happens to measure this landmark here, whereas the second measurement will pick out this landmark here. Note they don't have to come in order or anything like that, so we need to figure that out before we can do the measurement of it. With this, we have actually posed the SLAM problem. It can be solved in several different ways, and all the techniques that we have discussed so far all apply in some way. Common methods to approach the problem is to batch the thing, so you look at the whole trajectory and all the measurements at the same time, and then try to solve the thing uh, based on uh, numerical optimization. Common methods to do this is bundle adjustment or structure promotion, which are two vision-based uh, solutions to this. Another uh, interesting version that's been popping up lately is graph slam, where the whole slam problem is posed as a probabilistic graph, from which uh, a lot of different optimization methods can be applied to uh, get the solution. What we study more in detail in this course are the filtering solutions, 
There are many of them, uh, but two prominent ones that we will discuss and that will give, get attention from a separate module each is the EKF SLAM, where we use an extended Kalman filter either on the normal form or information form to solve the SLAM problem, and fast SLAM, which is more or less the application of a uh, marginalized particle filter to the SLAM problem. In all these solutions, the same kind of problems are important. So limited field of view. So it's not for sure that we see all the landmarks at the same time, which means that we need to tie up the map without seeing it all together at the same time. So how do I actually relate the first landmarks that I saw to the landmark that I see when I moved 100 meters to the left, for example? It turns out that the correlations within the map, it's really important to fix this. False detections and false associations. So more or less two different versions of getting the wrong measurement to the wrong landmark. This is a really tricky problem because if we associate the landmarks wrong uh, and then start to compensate our own position and the shape of the map based on that, uh, the solution quickly deteriorates and becomes uh, unuseful. So it's really important to deal with association. We will not uh, consider this case in this course. So we simplify the problem by saying that we have the proper associations. Finally, as the map grows, we talked about hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of landmarks. We get the problem that has high computational complexity and we need to deal with that. And the different methods that we discuss will deal with that in different ways. To summarize, I presented the simultaneous localization and mapping problem, the SLAM problem. It's a problem that involves both estimating a static map and uh, the pose of a dynamic sensor that's moving within this map. Uh, so I'm interested in the pose of myself with respect to this map that I'm building. It's a problem that needs to be solved simultaneously, uh, both the map and the pose be able to uh, get a good solution. We formulated it in terms of a model where we have a state for the pose of the sensor that's evolving according to a dynamic model, a nonlinear one for example, just as we have studied in many cases already, and a map that is static, not changing over time. And we have observations of these landmarks that make up the map, where it's important to associate the appropriate landmark in the map to the measurements that we actually have received. Two common solutions to this problem that we will discuss more is the EKF SLAM that uh, uses the extended comma filter in uh, different forms to solve this problem, and FAST SLAM which uses uh, the marginalized particle filter to solve the problem defined by this model. To read more, to get uh, a deeper introduction to SLAM, please consult section 11 to 11.1 in the textbook that introduces the SLAM problem.